Now we're living in a world of rapid technological advancement. And year after year, many new technologies emerged. If you feel overwhelmed by it, maybe my speech today will help you see them from a more open perspective. Many new technologies are misunderstood, genetic modification being one of them. Today, I'll introduce it from its technology, its history, and its influence to our lives. My inspiration to choose this topic actually came to me when I was attending a Model United Nations conference. My conference topic is the ethics in genetic modification in bioengineering. So while I was researching for my topic, I thought to myself, why don't I search online and see how the public reacts to some already existing products? So I went online, and this is what I found. I searched for genetically modified soybean, and out of the 16 products that emerged, nine stated non-genetically modified. Six of them didn't state anything, and only one stated genetically modified. And that was when I was intentionally searching for it. So that got me curious. Is this technology really so bad that all these people just desperately claiming to be unrelated? Or is this just another demonstration of a common fear towards new technologies? Before judging this, we must first know the theory behind it, which is what is gene and how to modify it. Genes are a special sequence in DNA that is used for programming proteins. Genes, together with intergenic region, make up chromosomes. Two chromosomes are paired up, and 23 of them make up the human genome. To modify a gene, we use special techniques to cut its original sequence and seal the new sequence into its place. Well, that seems like an easy theory, but how can we put the theory into practice? Let's take CRISPR-Cas9, the Nobel Prize-winning technology, for example. Cas9 is consisted of two parts, the DNA targeting device and the DNA cutting device. The targeting device is a strand of RNA used for identifying the DNA. First, the targeting device identifies and binds to the target DNA, and the cutting device cuts it into two parts. After that, an enzyme brings in a new sequence and seals it into the original position. And that marks the end of a genetic modification procedure. Because the new sequence can come from nearly anywhere from any organelle, that brings humans an enormous amount of new possibilities to improve our byproduct and thus improving our lives. Although this powerful technology may seem novel to us, it actually has a longer history than we thought. Back in 1940, more than 80 years ago, farmers have already learned to change the crop's DNA randomly by radiation to cause mutations and select them. However, Unlike modern genetic modifications, farmers at that time cannot choose which specific gene to modify, and thus cannot guarantee the result. However, the situation began to change when, in 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick discovered the structure of DNA, and thus opened up the possibility for humans to manipulate genes. In 1973, Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen developed genetic engineering and in 1994, the first GMO product, a tomato, became available for sale. These two milestones mark the official beginning of modern genetic modification. So as we can see, that's 50 and 30 years ago, which is quite a long history for technology. And that case may be true for many seemingly novel technology. It's just that we haven't read about them. Genetic modification didn't stay stagnant. Most recently, in 2020, CRISPR-Cas9, the Nobel Prize winning technology, came out drastically reducing the cost for researchers to develop a new type of modified gene. So every day, the technology are evolving and improving. Every day, they're becoming better and safer. Over the 30 years of GMO history, many successful products emerged. People modify crop strains for mainly two purposes. The first one, to increase herbicide and virus resistance to increase survival rate, which the rainbow papaya is a perfect example for this. The second, to increase nutritional value. And I'll take an example of the Golden Rice Project. In the 20th century, a new virus called the ringspot virus hit Hawaii and nearly wiped out the papaya plants there. 
In order to save Hawaii's papaya industry, researchers developed a new species of papaya called the rainbow papaya, which is naturally immune to this virus. From this example, we can conclude that new technologies such as genetic modification can have an enormous amount of economic benefits to the world because it saves Hawaii's papaya industry from destruction. From the following example, we can conclude that new technologies such as genetic modification can also practically improve people's lives. The Golden Rice Project aims to improve vitamin A deficiency in poverty regions. Because people there cannot afford vitamin A rich foods such as vegetables, they desperately need another more affordable alternative. And that the Golden Rice Project provides them with this alternative. The golden color is due to a special component added during the modification procedure to help people consume vitamin A, which improves their health condition. So genetically modified food industry is actually a pretty mature industry with constant improvement in agriculture species. According to FDA, in 2020, more than 94% of all soybeans planted are genetically modified, and more than 96% of all cotton planted are genetically modified. That shockingly great percentage indicates that genetically modified food has already taken a huge percentage in our lives. It's just that we hadn't read about it and noticed it. Well, if the previous example of genetically modified food still seems distant to you, maybe you haven't tried or heard about it yourself, the following example must be relevant to all of us. Vaccines. We all got that injected during the COVID-19 pandemic. Vaccines can be divided into four types. And the one I'm going to talk about today, and the most common one, is using part of the genetic code. This type can be further divided into three subtypes the viral vector method, the mRNA method, and the protein subunit method. All of them have some kind of similarities. The aim of vaccines is to inject the protein of the virus out of shell into human body to trigger an immune response, so that the next time we encounter a similar virus, we don't get killed by them. The viral vector method achieved this purpose by cutting a strand of the original virus DNA and insert it into another less harmful virus so that we achieve the immune response at a lower cost. The other two types are quite similar and has a similar theory behind it. So as we can see, without the technology of genetic modification, we cannot control a pandemic such as the COVID-19 so quickly and effectively. Granted, there's still many concerns over the genetic modification and its products, and it's quite normal for us to have doubt and suspicion towards new technologies. And that's mainly caused by the information gap, because normal people like us wouldn't read about or know such cutting-edge new technologies information. However, instead of stuck in a state of internal doubt and suspicion, you can reach out for help to professionals to fill this information gap. With the help of the great internet, official and governmental records are just one click away from us. For example, if you want to know about the Golden Rice Project, you can simply type in goldenrice.com and read about all the information provided. Or if you want to know whether consuming genetically modified foods cause diseases such as cancer, you can type it into Google and it will give you a simple and straightforward answer. And this method of confirming information applies to nearly any new technology that we and may encounter in our daily life. So in conclusion, we should neither fear nor doubt new technologies such as genetic modification. However, it's wise for us to fact check them and confirm them before trying them out. Many new technologies are misunderstood and our duty is to check the information and try them out if they seem reassuring and safe to us. As long as they seem safe to us, don't hesitate to try them out for it may be a chance of improving our lives. Thank you.